Good morning and uh, welcome to episode 73 of Talking to Artists. So Talking to Artists is really a weekly casual conversation where artists just try to talk about their inspiration, their business, uh, and what kind of keeps them going so that people can have a bit of a peek behind the curtains on what it is to be a full-time artist. Uh, I'm Kate Taylor, your host. I'm also an abstract painter, so trying to apply all that I learned from all these people into my own practice. And today, super excited to talk to Todd Monk, who is a figurative artist whose uh, quite remarkable work looks almost like photography. I'm going to bring him right on because I think he's right here. So, could you we should bring on Todd and then all about his work? Hey. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay today. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, oh, of course, the dog starts right away. Um, of course. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I don't think we met before, actually, or I'm not sure. You know, I I think we met at Art Basel Miami at one of the Spectrum okay. shows many, many years ago, though. And I don't think actually, even I remember talking to you, it was only afterwards I clued in, oh my gosh, he's a Canadian. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah and I like to go around and talk to all the Canadians at those shows, so. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. Although I've ha I've had to kind of, it's been interesting because I kind of start to notice, wow, my sales are just not as good when I'm a lot more social. So I try yeah. hard to now to spend the time in the booth doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I, uh, I'm really excited to talk to you because I'm definitely familiar with your work and I've seen it for many years. And for the longest time, I actually thought it was photography because it's got such a, a realistic quality. Mm -hmm. But with your pixelation that you use, I think it's a really a cool technique. So maybe you can talk a little bit about yourself and how you got started and how that you developed that okay look. Uh, well I guess we'll go back to the beginning um, <laughs> I uh, I you know grew up in small town Ontario um, like Owen Sound and those kind of places and uh, I was never really a sports kid so I ended up kind of being more of like comic books and drawing and all of that stuff and uh, in, yeah, I just always did that went off to college to be an artist of some sort and um, and got got into a painting class and I really didn't like to like traditionally blend paint together I don't know why mm -hmm. I just like I just you know oil painting <laughs> and stuff like that I'm like I just don't like doing this so yeah I, I came up with this um this kind of workaround where I'd like I'd just paint values like the values of something but add color like give those values colors and then your brain kind of does the work of blending the color together um and 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 since then it's just kind of evolved and evolved and evolved into whatever this thing is that I do now. I, I call it pixelism, um, for lack of you know any other style. Of, you know, there's no style out there, kind of like it that's already established mm -hmm. with a name, other than like stenciling. But I don't stencil, so it's you know just give it. No, that. and I would I would say it reminds me more of a maybe a more graphic version of pointillism. Like yeah, in the way that you're kind of using the individual shapes, but I see that yours also looking at more closely is more kind of shape related as well, as opposed to having all the dots being the same. Yeah, kind of yeah. shape and whatever. And that's kind of where the pixelism thing came up. It's it's sort yeah. of like pointillism, but it's more pixel based, and you know, yeah, there like there are all kinds of little individual shapes within. Well, if you look behind me, there's all kinds of like little yeah. individual shapes, not just like a bunch of dots. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting too, though. I mean, what, what school did you go to uh, for your arts I, degree? I went all over the place. Um, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was a professional dropout for a while. So I went to Sheridan College for animation um, and didn't go too far into that because I'm like, I'm like very dyslexic when it comes to math. So animation is all <laughs> timing and stuff like that. Right. So I was yeah. like trying to time things and couldn't do the numbers. And I'm like, ah, this is not for me. So then uh, I ended up in Georgian College for um, uh, design and illustration and uh, thought I was going to be an illustrator, went out into the real world and kind of got sucked into the graphic design world and mm -hmm. uh, spent 20, 20 some years doing graphic design and uh, graphic design and then ended up kind of in the back end of graphic design. So like print production kind of technical stuff. Very yeah, technical. me too. Did no, I, I actually, oh, I did, yeah, 10, 15 years in print production, oh, yeah, wow, which yeah. actually, I personally, I originally wanted to be a graphic artist as well, but it was one of those things where 
you know, in the olden days, if you're a female, you had to start off in reception. So then after that, I was like, okay, that was driving me crazy after about two weeks of boredom. Yeah. Um, and the only job that was available was not graphic arts, it was print production. I'm like, yeah, anything, just get me off the reception desk. Yeah. But I loved it because I felt it actually gave you a great deal of freedom and you learned a lot about the techniques yeah. of stuff. Yeah, it was it's, actually pretty practical. Yeah, it's definitely a lot more than just designing cool stuff, you know. it's um, And especially as, like, I was in the transition from, from like paste up and all that stuff into the digital. And I actually developed a lot of um, digital systems for like uh, the Globe and Mail and the Toronto Star and stuff like that in my career, um, like digital production and, and uh, um, like pre-flighting for ads and stuff like that and, uh, and, and design and stuff like that. So hmm. it's, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was an interesting time in the business, you know, and. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I did some, I did some cool stuff and then, uh, you know, just kind of went into the management end of it as my career went on and, and then just kind of was like, I'm going to be an artist full time. Yeah. It's it's interesting too, because it was like, you know, I think we were both in that phase of that industry where that's where you start to see huge change and oh, businesses yeah. that were, you know, like the traditional print businesses where they're six, you know, six color Heidelberg presses, which then in a very short period of time became totally obsolete. And it, oh, it's yeah. just, it's sad, but it's also interesting to see how quickly things change. And you have to always remember that, you know, when you're kind of <laughs> looking yeah, yeah. at new technologies. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely proud of this, but um, when I went into the Toronto Star, I came like kind of fresh out of, I, I, went, I went to college, graduated, got a job at a small town newspaper with v very limited t uh, digital equipment, um, mm -hmm. software and stuff like that. So I really had to like figure things out to make it work with what they had. And, yeah. uh, and then when I went to the Toronto star, I went in and I knew like Quark express and I knew Photoshop and, and they were still using stat cams and paste up and all that stuff. And I went in and I went, what are you guys doing? So I showed them that they can take like a Canada 3000 logo and shoot it or blow it up and, and like shrink it and, and grow it and in uh, Photoshop. And they went, you can't do that. I said, yeah, I just did. And I printed it out <laughs> and I stuck it on the end of the newspaper and then within like a month, like 200 people didn't have jobs anymore <laughs> because like all of that department was obsolete, you know, and it was like, oh, yeah, yeah, think out of the box, guys. Anyway. Well, they, they must have seen it. Oh, I mean, they must have seen it coming too. Cause I remember I that too, where, where you had to doing a magazine ads where you're like, okay, this one is 47% of the original. And then someone would have to take it in the camera and shoot it up and yeah. paste it to the board and things would fall off the board. And, oh, yeah. you know. and that hot lack of stuff. <laughs> oh God. Although I have to say, I did always love the smell of hot wax. <laughs> yeah, yeah this, it yeah. smells good, but it's a nightmare to work with. Yeah, it sticks on your fingers. Yeah. yeah, I think it's interesting too, though, that you kind of went into doing a painting class, but decided like, yeah, I just don't like any of that stuff. Yeah, well, um, that's kind of how decided... my brain works, right? I'm always trying to like figure out my way of doing everything, sort of, you know, like trouble. I troubleshoot everything in my head all the time, so mm -hmm. that's kind of where that. Yeah. Went. I almost wonder if that's part of the print production training because I find I do that too. And I look at something, it's like, how would they make it? How would they do it? How could they do it better? You know, you kind of naturally go through that to those be. kind of pathways, which I think is also, um, you know, it's it's interesting to me that you kind of you end up distilling something into something that's kind of cleaner lines. Yeah, yeah, strange. like what you've done. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Either that, or I'm on the spectrum some in some sort of way, and my brain just does strange things with things. I don't know. Well, one would say maybe a lot of artists are. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and I think a lot of production artists are too. I think you're right, yeah. but yeah, it's the fun of it. Embrace, embrace the differences. Yes, ma'am. And so, how did you start off with? Uh, and I think probably the stuff that I most knew you for was the uh, the women swimming nude in their swimming mm. pools, like that kind of. I think you mentioned that combination of elegance and um and sensuality but it was almost like i don't know peeking into someone's backyard or something like yeah. it felt like it wasn't exhibitionist it was more someone just enjoying the feel of their water on their bodies and i don't know yeah um that all started um i was uh when i first started painting and and like kind of painting for for like an attempt at a career or attempt at selling them or or whatever i was trying to do i like i didn't aim to do this I just kind of like everything just kind of fell on me or I fell mm -hmm. into it sort of so um with with the with the women um I was when I first started I was just going on the internet finding pictures and forums and stuff like that and just you know painting them and then um and then I found this one 
photo of this lady doing like swimming on her back in a pool and the water was amazing and, and her, her body was amazing and she looked amazing and the colors were all amazing together. And, uh, and I just fell in love with this photo, but I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm starting to gain notoriety. I'm starting to sell art. I'm starting to get press. So I can't be like stealing photos from the internet and painting them. Um, yeah. So then I just threw this in a folder on my computer and, you know, every month I'd go back and fawn over it. And, um, and then w one day I just was like, I'm going to go see if that guy has other photos. It was like, I, somehow I got the name of the photographer and everything. So I popped onto his website and found out that he was actually selling the rights to those photos. So I'm like, Oh, oh perfect. Wow. What are the chances <laughs> of that? So I bought the rights to this photo and, uh, and, and I just painted it and, and it turned out better than I expected. It was maybe my second water painting. But after that, I was like, okay, I clearly need to make more of these, but how? Yeah. And then, so I, I just, I hired a model, put her in the, put her in a friend's pool. And, uh, and we just took a bunch of photos, like 2000 photos. And some of them were great. And I painted them. And so I, you know, I don't know if what I'm shooting for is like, sexuality it's more like sensuality it's more like i say in my um in my artist statement that i'm giving you a look into somebody's private life like like a, mm -hmm. a glimpse of one second into somebody's private life whether they're just sitting or swimming or laying down or whatever it is it's just a just like a kind of a peek behind a curtain a real quick peek behind a curtain um and i don't know I, like i'm that the blue like these kind of blues are just my favorite color like i don't know yeah, me too <laughs> i go on vacation and I just stare at the ocean for a day straight you know so um i get to kind of steal a little bit of that and 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 build it into what i do and i you know i just kind of i don't know sometimes you just don't know why you do things you just do things you know well, I do think, though, that sometimes, like, obviously, you first saw that image, and there's something in the back of your brain that's just like, yeah, it's going to be important. I need to not yeah, just maybe. toss it and not, I need to continue to pursue it, right? Yeah. yeah. And I, I think that does happen. And sometimes I think it takes years for all those pieces to come together where you're able to kind of actually make it happen. Yeah, they're still trying to come together, I think. <laughs> you know? Well, uh, who, I know there's some famous artists that said, yeah, once you figure, you figure it all out, then you're kind of done as an artist, right? Like, you, you're, I think that's mm -hmm. always the case. You're always going to be pushing forward and doing things yeah. differently. Yeah. And, and then stuff. you look at different aspects of your of your art too, or right, or pivot or yeah. whatever. Like you, you switch over to the business end and try to work on the business end once you got your, you know, once you kinda know what you're doing with the with the painting with your painting skills. I mean mm -hmm. you know, with my style I can only get de let more detailed or less detailed. I can't really get better, you know. Better right. looks like more detail. Well, I guess I have gotten better over the years, and I guess I can. Yeah, I'll, I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm sure. I'm sure the original pixelated ones you did are, are less sophisticated than what you're doing now. Oh, but yeah, part definitely. of part of the uh, part of the appeal, it seems to me, though, is that if it's super detailed, then it loses the whole element that you're trying to produce, which is kind of these larger elements that are all the same color, but kind of from a distance yeah, blend together. Yeah. Right? yeah, it it yeah it does that, and it also it becomes like more wow. You know, like when it when it's super detailed, people are like, whoa, you know, but then it's harder to recognize as a painting at the same time, sort of from, mm -hmm. you know, four feet away or whatever. So yeah. I don't know. I, I try not. I always walk this fine line between wanting to be very detailed and wanting to be a little more, a little more obvious, I guess. Yeah. Well, a little more Todd Monkish, maybe. I, I guess kind so. of that's sort of your look. And yeah. so, um, so you obviously talked about kind of then moving on to the business part of it too, which, so when did you decide that this was going to be kind of a business you to approach it as a business? Mm, I, I kind of always had that idea. Um, like I said, I kind of like just fall into things or things get thrown at me in, in the business. Um, and I really need to change that, but, um, the, Seems where to be I, working. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, feast or fam and you know the art world right uh, absolutely yeah. but um yeah i i when uh like 12 years ago or 10 years ago or something like that i um i just had art in my condo because at the time i needed something on the walls so i just painted stuff and put them on the walls and then a friend came over and said hey who does these i said i do she's like well 
we're going to take these and put them in my store on King Street West back in the day. And, um, and we are going to sell them. And I said, uh, okay. And that's how this all started. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. and then, so it was like a tiny little operation there. You know, I had a lot of art on the walls and things were selling and stuff. And I'm like, Oh geez, maybe there is something to this. Right. So, um, I guess years later, like five years later, you know what? I would even say in the last four years, let's say in the last four years, I actually started to think, okay, I need to learn how to market. I need to learn how to like sell myself. I need, I need to like, you know, all the things that are involved in, in selling your art. Nobody's going to do it for you in most cases. Right. So Mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of buckled down and tried to learn how to do all of that stuff, like books and podcasts and books and podcasts and audio books and videos and, you know, all that stuff. So, um, yeah, there was just a point where, where I figured like, I need to figure this out. I need to get on top of this marketing thing because, you know, I don't want to hire somebody to do it yet. Um, I've worked with, like art reps and and stuff like that in the past and they just never do it as good as I do so well and that kind of makes sense right because part of the reason that people like the work is they like you as the artist like there's a connection there right yeah yeah which I always think that too like when I used to do social media for other companies I'm like it isn't the same as the voice that you have yourself where you can kind of you're sharing your own thoughts and your own ideas right yeah yeah people are going to ask an art rep or or someone a question about your art and you know they're not they're they're either going to have the version that they saw on your website or the version that they made up on the spot or no answer for it at all. Right. Where I'm, yeah. I can, I can at least make something up that sounds legit if I'm yeah. going to make something up. But in most cases I'll actually have the, the true narrative that goes along with whatever that question is, you know, I think too, you know, especially I'm sure if you're doing outdoor shows and, and things like art fairs is you modify your story a little bit based on the person who's standing in front of you. Yeah. And, and you also, you know? Yeah, you start out with a story and then, you know, the more people you talk to, you, I, I, I found I just steal little snippets from the stuff they say to me and pack it into yeah. my story. I know, you're like, like, wow, that's brilliant. I'm yeah, adding that. I never thought <laughs> yeah. of that. Hmm, that's going in. You know? And yeah. there's so much, like, there's so much that I talk about that I've actually just robbed from other people that I've, like, just strangers that have walked by. <laughs> it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, I mean, yeah, those are, like, I love doing art fairs and just standing yeah. and talking to thousands of people in a week. It's, it's, you know, you can't beat that. Yeah, I totally agree. It's a real charge. And I think that's uh, oh, yeah. certainly what I think we've all been missing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a really good high in the last couple, the last year and change of, uh, have not given us that, let's say, no. um, we've just been like painting and building up, like painting all this stuff and sitting with it kind of, or yeah, just which sneaking, I was, sneaking I was... off to somebody's driveway <laughs> and selling it. Well, I've done uh, three outdoor shows in the last three weeks, and it's ah. funny because normally that would be no problem for me. But I have to tell you, I feel drained right now because really? I'm so out of practice. Like, and I love the people, and I loved the piece of it. Yeah. But it's been there's work I've done a year ago that's now finally seen the light of day, and that seems weird too. Yeah, yeah, you know, I get that. Um, yeah, we, well, uh, s- me and six other artists recently opened and closed uh, a collective in Yorkville collective. here in Toronto. I and, saw that. Uh, looked amazing. Oh, you went there, didn't you? Did you go? With I you? didn't go because I was oh. at the cottage, but I've been, I follow you and Mark oh. and uh, Jeff oh, and a okay. bunch of people that were part of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It like exceeded expectations in terms of just how it came together and how it looked like you walked in. It's like, whoa, this is, this is, looks like the real deal, you know? Um, yeah. But um for the first little while, like we all worked one day a week there because we didn't want to hire staff and we can talk about art and stuff like that. So we, we all sat for the, for a full day and the first week or two of sitting there and people would come in, you're like, and it was still kind of under COVID (laughs) rules. Right. Too. So, um, you know, people would come in, you're like, I don't even know how to talk to people anymore. So yeah. Yeah. So you kind of had to like, like like back when you did so for instance you know you do your first day of a show and you haven't you haven't gone out and did the thing in a while so your first day of the show is just kind of like kicking yourself into gear and then starting to get your groove with talking to people and then getting your you know you get your your narratives down and you get you weave those in with your groove and all that stuff and it's like 
that's how that was. It's like, I haven't talked to anybody about art in like a year and a half, basically. So, mm -hmm. so it's like, um, yeah, it was, it was a cool to feel that, you know, those gears start to work again, you know? And how did that come about? Um, <clears throat> the, the leasing company for a bunch of properties in Yorkville reached out to, I believe, Morgan Jones and asked him if he was interested in starting or opening a gallery there to fill um, some space that was left vacant by like COVID and circumstances, stuff like that. And, um, and he approached me and a couple other artists and said, you think this is a good idea? I'm like, what have you done in the last year and a half? Yeah, it's a good idea. Let's go yeah. do that. And so, it's, you know, in Yorkville. I mean, yeah, it's in Yorkville. It was a weird spot in Yorkville as far as foot traffic goes and stuff like that. But that's another story entirely. Um, but um, yeah, so we, you know, I, I, you know, we sat down and we talked about it. And then maybe two weeks later, we were open, you know, it was like, all right, let's go. We got, we got two weeks. Yeah, wow. it was pretty cool. And uh, yeah, it just came together beautifully. And it, that's like, amazing. Great, it was a great group of artists because everybody was, was good. Everybody was lovely to, to work with. Um, and all like we kind of curated, curated the art. So it was every artist was different from each other. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have like, like three people painting Muskoka trees and, you know, wild animals and then a bunch of like four people doing abstracts and stuff like that. It was like, everybody's got their own jam. So yeah, you come in and like each artist is very distinct from each other, which is, which was kind of the, the goal and which worked out really great because there was really no competition as far as like, well, very distinct from each other, but also really worked well together. Like, yeah, I know, yeah, it's you know, true. Mark, Mark ran his gallery. So I could sort of, I felt like I could see a little bit of his fingers in that, like in terms mm -hmm. of um, curating it so that it works together and you could go as a client, you could go and say, yeah, I want one of each of those you could put in your house and they would all, kind of fit together yeah yeah it, there was there was still kind of like a bright like everything was still kind of brightly colored and a lot Optimistic. of people said it was kind of poppy but i don't know if it yeah. was poppy but it was still you know it was there was yeah it was just all very bright art which was great yeah that's fabulous well i think it's also just a testament to what artists have done like in the last year and a half i think a lot of artists have really changed their business models and their business plans and been maybe oh, yeah. a bit more adventurous and reaching out and doing those kinds of things. Yeah, it's the, uh, you know, hanging art on your fence in your yard for sale or or just yeah. pivoting and do like a different style, which I've, I've done twice, I guess, experimented with a couple, maybe two or three different styles since since the, the pandemic started. And, you know, um, you, know you, you just got to figure it out. And, and this, this whole business, this whole thing, the business of being an artist and the art of being a business is is your um you're constantly having to adapt to um to external stimuli i guess you know like mm -hmm. if if you paint something and it works and then it stops working it's not a great idea to keep painting that or or yeah. whatever you're doing you know you kind of have to figure something else out because if you're yeah. painting something that's not working it's not going to work it's going to keep not working you know um, you know, you have to keep people excited and you have to, you know, you have to be on top of that all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and you, you see people who do that and, and you see people who don't do that. So it's, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with that, but. <laughs> no, I, I, no, I think you have a really good point though. I think there are artists that are in their studio and they paint for themselves and that's really where they go. So in, to a certain degree, they continue potentially to paint the same thing even if it doesn't sell because it's for them, right? Yeah. And I yeah. think then you have an artist who is approaches this more as, as really traditionally artists have always done, except for the very recent future, recent past as a business. And you do have a market and it's not to say you can chase every market, but it's good to know what your market likes and it's good to be able to track what does well. Yeah, it's true. Yes. Yeah. I'm just curious. Do you have a business plan for your art business? Not really. No, just sell more art. That's kind of the business <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, no, I don't, I don't, I just, uh, I just, and I probably should, but I wouldn't even know where to start. It would just be sell more art and make more yeah. art, sell more art, make more smiles, you know, I, you know. Um, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting one because I, um, I do have do a business you? plan. 
Well, partially because I ran my own business. I ran a marketing firm for oh, okay. 15 years, 20 years more than that, maybe. Right. Um, so I do. But it used to be like one of those tomes. It was like, you know, <clears throat> 70 pages that you never go back and read that. So now it's a very short version of my business plan. And I've got a one page marketing plan. It's kind of like okay. really high level. Not to okay. say I always follow it. But <laughs> when I'm feeling lost, it makes me feel better. I have got some sort of plan in place. <laughs> okay, yeah, something, something to think about then. <laughs> right. <laughs> And so you're ta just talking about shifting and changing. I see that uh, what you're doing more recently now are these uh, really beautiful, elegant hand portraits. I don't know if those ah, are portraits or totally how you about that. relate to those. Um, yeah. Uh, once again, it, it, like, this is what I always say. Um, you can only paint so many boobs. And then, you know, you kind of, <laughs> it's like, ah, if I paint another boob, I'm going to shoot myself. So um, I, then, you know, I'll, I'll move on to like portraits. And then I'll move on to, and then I'll, I, I kind of jump back and forth to keep myself from getting bored. And that's not smart when it comes to series and stuff like that, but it is what it is. Um, so the hands came about, um, I was bored of portraits and I was bored of bodies and water and all of that stuff. So I, uh, I was just, you know, I spent, maybe the the last six months of lockdown lockdown like when we were all not supposed to go anywhere and everything um so say the last six months of 20 what was last year 2020 um just thinking about what i what else i can paint you know um what else i can paint that that would like keep me interested in painting and you know i'm not i'm not a big wildlife guy or i'm not a big you know, trees and all that stuff, guys. So um, I, I was kind of, most of my ideas are, are, are spawned by stuff I see while I'm flicking through Instagram, basically, right? So I'm <laughs> flicking, I'm flicking, I'm flicking, and I just see some hands, like just hands, somebody's hands. And I'm like, ooh, hmm, okay, that's interesting. It's still a body. It's still something that I'm familiar with. And, uh, and everybody has them, so everybody can relate to them. Well, most people have them. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I was like, you can convey a lot of emotions just with hands, just with the way you're holding your hands. Um, and you can read a lot of emotions into that too. So I, um, I just downloaded a bunch of hands off the internet, kind of looked at them, studied them, and then hired or got a model and a really good photographer, uh, Matthew Guido, you guys are amazing. And uh, <laughs> shout out. And, um, <laughs> and uh, went and shot this model's hands just in like three hours of just her hands hanging up in the air, you know, all that stuff. And, um, and went and just started to paint them. But I had an idea that I wanted them to be like part lit or part in color and part in black and white or something like that. So I kind of experimented around with that. And as I was painting one that was kind of working and kind of not working, I had the, the brainwave to maybe use spray paint, mask it all off. Like we used to mask things off in the old days. And, uh, <coughs> and then just like mist spray paint in on an angle to give it the color, but still the transparency. So you can see the paint underneath it. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was, it was just a shot in the dark kind of thing. And um, so as I was posting it, I was getting great <laughs> response from it. Like people are liking them. And, so uh, and, and I was like, okay, well, this is cool. We're on to something here. Yeah. Need, do you need a second? Sorry about that. It's, oh, that's yeah. okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying hard not to cough. As far as where you think about it, you have to cough. I <laughs> Sorry. I just feel that itch start to grow. Um, yeah, I'm good now. Yeah. So, so yeah, I just, um, you know, once again, it's just another experimental pivot that um, that kind of, you know, made people smile and, and I got great feedback from it. So, um, Well, it does seem to me to fit in, like really it's still kind of consistent yeah. with your portraits and your water babies or your water women or whatever they, you call them. Yeah. Um, so, and do you go back and forth? Like, do you kind of work in, in different collections at the same time or when you're finished with something, do you kind of finish with it? No, nah, like they're kind of always ongoing. So, um, I'll paint a bunch of hands till I'm kind of tired of doing them and then I'll jump onto 
the water baby, which is behind me, which is not finished because I'm procrastinating like crazy on it. <laughs> um, as you can see right there, there's still white. Um, and then, you know, I got, I got sick of doing that one. So I jump. I'm like ADD when it comes to my art, but, um, yeah. yeah and then I, I jump onto a bunch of portraits. I'll see something else that inspires me. I'm like, Ooh, go do that. You know? So, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, right now, all of my, all the, all the hands that I have remaining are on a plane to England. They're on their way to the affordable art fair Battersea. You know, oh, that's great. So that's exciting. Yeah. That's very exciting. Yeah. But you're so, not but you're not going. I haven't quite decided yet. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready for travel, you know. Yeah. I'm uh, I know. It's it's it that still feels weird because I know I even I was looking at uh, Art Basel and thinking, Oh, it'd be great to go down there just actually as a viewer as opposed to a participant where you can actually yeah. go and see all these shows. Yeah. which normally you don't have the opportunity to, but I think, yeah, I'm also, not quite ready to travel yeah. yet either, I think. Yeah, last year, or the last time I did, I did it down for Basel week, I I had my folks there. So my parents, they, I'm like, you guys sit in the booth. I'm going to scope for one hour. I went to scope. I ran through the place, talked to people, you know, introduced, blah, 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 blah. Hopped back in an Uber, blasted back to the show. It's ridiculous. But I mean, yeah. yeah, that's one thing when you're working a booth down there. There's so much amazing stuff going on, but you can't go and see it. You know, you're yeah. kind of stuck here talking to your strangers. But I yeah. mean, that's what you're there for, right? Oh, for sure. Last time I did it, I did it with, uh, I did our Basel Miami. I think it was through Spectrum with ADC. So I yep. actually did have the opportunity oh, to oh. see almost everything. And okay. uh, somehow, I don't remember how, somehow I ended up with all these passes that allowed me to kind of go into all these extra places, oh, nice. which was super cool to be able to kind of do that with, yeah. with any other artists wives and to be able to really take your time is quite a luxury yeah and there's so much inspiration to be had down there so many yeah. and like the artists that you see on the internet that you like you know you can go down yeah. and like see their stuff in person up close and maybe even talk to them you know it's, it's yeah. just it's a cool experience well it's interesting i think to remember as artists that that's why people go to these art shows right is to meet the artists yeah yeah and i think sometimes we forget when we're on the receiving end of that that people come and want to talk to us and talk to talk to meet to us and yet when we're the guests or whatever we kind yeah. of do the same thing yeah people are yeah. excited to talk to us for some reason yeah <laughs> um and well i think it's a it's a career path that most people don't do right i mean yeah. it's an unusual career path and i think that's part of it i think the more i the older I get too, the more I realize that people would have loved to have done a more creative career, but mm -hmm. they do the right thing. They do the practical thing that pays for a mortgage, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yes, for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And, and one thing I always tell, like when, uh, when I'm hanging around with people at these shows and we're all standing around, I don't know why I thought of this, but um, you know, people are coming through and people are coming through and people are getting upset because nobody's buying or whatever. And it's like, not everybody here, not everybody that walks in here is here to buy art. You know, most, uh, there's a lot of people that just want to go see cool stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and even the, like the gallery that, w that I just did, I'm like, you know, I had to, I I had to repeat to some people, not everybody that walks in here is here just to walk in and buy art. You know, people just yeah. like to walk like window shop, you know, mm -hmm. You know, you don't walk into every store as you're walking down Queen Street West and uh, and just buy something at every store. You know, you go in, you look around, you don't see anything or you're just there to check stuff out, you know? Yeah. Well, and there's that classic uh, marketing um, pyramid, too. That's kind of, a, I think, something like 50 percent are not even going to be interested in whatever you're selling. Right. Another 30 percent might be interested, but not ready. And mm -hmm. there's another, I don't know, 10 percent or whatever the numbers are that are kind of, you know, quite interested and it's only about three or four percent that are actually ready to buy right now yeah. yeah so if you look at it like that you have to talk to a lot of people and you have to build those relationships oh, yeah. for down the path when they're ready to buy right yeah very much so very much so um, which i think is easier for extroverts like us when you can just enjoy the experience without it having to be something you have to do to drive your business forward yeah yeah i kind of ride the fine line between introvert and extrovert like i can i can like once you get me going you can't stop. Like I'll, I'll <laughs> I, I had a saying for the art shows. I'm not, I, I won't walk away from my booth until I can see the wall at the end of the hallway. You know, as long mm -hmm. as there's no people in the aisle, yeah. I'm going to be standing there trying to talk to people. But at the yeah. same time, like I'll, you know, I'll, I'll box up too. Like, you know, I can, I have to, I kind of have to kick myself out of, 
out of the intro or yeah in out of the introvert into the extrovert you know it's not just like a natural thing so um mm -hmm. you, which i think is going to be hard for everybody right now because everybody's been an introvert yeah everybody people who are, who are aren't naturally <laughs> yeah 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 it's also one of those things that i kind of learned pretty early on too is that sometimes it's dangerous to make an assessment as you're looking at somebody looking at your work it's like oh they're not going to buy yeah Right. Very. And so yeah. I think that's the other uh, thing that I do, even if I'm tired and my feet are tired and my back hurts, you know, it's just like, no, you need to go and you need to talk to every person in an authentic way. Yes. Um, because and you I, just don't know. And I make it, I make a very clear effort to do that. My, mm -hmm. uh, my ex-wife used to just judge potential clients by what kind of person shoes they had. And, uh, and I did not like that. And, you know, I'd be talking to someone over here and she'd be like elbowing me like, this person's got such and such a person. I'm like, I don't care. I'm just talking to everybody. I'll get to them. I'll get to them. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, I remember years ago, I had an acquaintance and, uh, you know, she, she said, well, you know, if you shop at a place like Holt Renfrew, like you have to dress up to go shopping there. I'm like, I'm not going to dress up yeah. so that a salesperson can take me seriously. If they don't take me seriously, I don't really care. And in actual fact, I found I got to become a little bit, um, I don't know, weird in the sense that I, re I refused to even make an effort <laughs> in those places, you know? I look like a homeless person as I walk into shop. <laughs> Most <laughs> super wealthy people do. You know, you don't see Mark yeah. Zuckerberg walking around in a Prada suit, you know, ever. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. No, I agree. I, years ago, I used to work in Oakville at a, a high-end restaurant. And that was the thing. It's just like these people are sometimes coming off their boats yeah. to come to this restaurant. So you can't judge. And I mean, not, I wouldn't, I'm not going to judge anyway, but I think at an art show, it's really important to remember that because people love your art. They love your art. And yeah. for some people, it's a drop in the bucket. For other people, they've really saved and they've really looked at your work for a long time. And it's a huge, important purchase for them too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, but they all have to be honored. I went to a party one night at somebody's house in Toronto and uh, speaking of that and walked into their kitchen to get a drink and they had like a bunch of my business cards from over the years on their fridge. And I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute, what's going on here? And, and that's happened a couple of times and it's like, it's freaky. Like it's freaky, yeah. but like, you know, if people like your stuff, they like your stuff and they, yeah. and, and they do save up for that time when, you know, they can grab a piece and it's cool. And, and, I when, think also, and when those people do that, you're like, you really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I run into people too, who really like, like the work a lot. And the same thing, they'll, they'll come to a show sometimes with a card, you know, is like four or five years old, Yeah. but there isn't quite that one piece that's really talked to them yet. And once they see that one, then they pull the trigger. Mm, that just gave me a marketing idea. <laughs> do like a 10% off on your business and just say, bring this to a live show and get 10% off your whatever you want to buy. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. That's not a horrible Ooh. idea. I might, I might steal that <laughs> steal idea. It. Go ahead. <laughs> that just popped into my head. Um, cool. Uh, on another note, before we, uh, I do want to talk to you about ADC one of these days or Blink or whatever it is. I yeah, keep forgetting for sure. to reach out to you about that. So, Yeah, no, let's do that. Because uh, I, I, actually, I did do an interview with Lisa who runs um, Blink and ADC. It. Yeah, and, uh, and I think now is the time to uh, sign up, so. Okay. After this, we'll talk. Okay, cool. <laughs> so the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, because I do think that that's also a great way of being able to, not ADC, but be able to expand your reach. Like you were saying mm -hmm. before, you're doing the same thing. Sometimes the work is still good, but you've kind of saturated the market a little bit. Yeah. So it's always good to go and reach new markets. Yeah, that's where I feel like I'm at right now, is my immediate market is kind of saturated. Um, and, and I know that just by like the lack of response and in like sales and, and mail blasts and, and sh like whatever little shows I'm doing and stuff like that. I think people are just kind of like, all right, enough guy. So um, <laughs> I'm very much looking to expand my market now. So I'm mm -hmm. like next week I'm putting like a big push on, you know, galleries all over wherever and stuff like that. Um, I think it's just imperative right now that I kind of expand. Yeah. Well, I think also the other thing is all the artists have pivoted, I think art buyers have pivoted and they're much more likely and interested in buying art online when yeah. they really hadn't been before too. So I think there's mm. a lot of synergies coming into play right now that I think that a smart artist can really leverage like through their gallery relationships or kind of, you know, non hometown kind yeah. of contacts. Yeah, exactly. Right? Um, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of, I'm kind of lucky where I've sold, which I'm sure you have too, like 
all over the world, like from Australia to, you know, Argentina to all over the place. Right. But, you know, those are, those are kind of like one offs and I'd like that to be more than one offs, you know, <laughs> 50 offs. <laughs> yeah. 50 offs. You know, I, you know, I have, I have a collector in Australia that has like, I don't know, eight, nine pieces of mine or something like that. But, um, but I'd like to have, 10 collectors in Australia that had eight or nine or 10 pieces of mine, you know, that'd be awesome. Or even one, yeah. who cares? Yeah. You know? um, and is, is that for original art or prints or both? Yeah, it's or? original. Yeah, it's all original. Yeah. Um, and then the prints are kind of going all over the place, but um, yeah. And, and that's another thing. Like I've got a great print system built into my website, which I've got through art storefronts, which I'm sure you may be familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, they've got like a great like front end and back end print scenario going on so um you know you can buy prints and get frames and everything directly from my website and shipping is directly from my like everything's just like you go you buy it gone you know you don't have to there's no external you don't have to go to like i i, I wouldn't even know society six or whatever like that to get to get stuff um so yeah that's a market i'd really like to to pump to because it not only you know, not only are the prints great and the quality is awesome, but it's also like a great passive income. Mm -hmm. um, and so do you manage all of the framing of it yourself or is that all no, done through it's party? All done so you don't touch anything? No, I don't touch <laughs> anything. I just kind of like, I get notification. Um, and then I get notification as the process rolls through, like, you know, prints, prints are ready, prints are shipped, and then prints are received. Um, and then you get paid and, you know, that's that. It's It's pretty awesome. And if you're selling... If you sell a lot of prints, it can be really, really awesome. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's just easy. Like you just, you just kind of, you load art up to your website like you would your website, but it's going into the, into the, like you, there's a separate one for originals and prints, kind of like a separate setup. And mm -hmm. yeah, you just load the prints in and good to go. They're there. And so art storefronts manages all the fulfillment then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, sort of, yes. The website, sends it to a fulfillment company um and it, but it, yeah i guess it's all managed through that like they they're they don't do anything really on their end like hands-on it's just all set up to be automated so mm -hmm. there's like they have print sites all over the world one of them is here in north york or markham or vaughn or something like that print partner um which i know uh jeff turner uses as well yeah and it's just automatically set up when somebody buys from me, they get the, they get the info. I guess they get a, they, somebody sends them like the, uh, the high res PDF or sorry, high res uh, JPEG of the image and they print it, do it, whatever they have to do to it, ship it done. It's pretty cool. Mm. Nice and easy. Yeah, that's cool. It beats doing it the old fashioned way. Well, I know. Yeah, for sure. I know that's something I keep thinking. Yeah, I've got to get, I've got to move into that direction at some point. I just haven't done it, done it yet. But art, art storefronts yeah. is great on that end because it's, um, you know, it, it's fully realized. It's up and running. Um, it's a nice basic website. It's not too snazzy, but you don't need too snazzy to sell art. Um, mm -hmm. And it's got the prints. It's got, you know, everything. And if you live in, live in the States, you've also got like pillows and, you know, calendars yeah. and all that other stuff. We don't have that here. I'm fine with that. I don't need cups and stuff like that um <laughs> like getting that just seems gross <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah uh, my yeah, my it, issue is my issue is photography mostly i haven't had i don't have, mm, have high enough quality photographs of my work mm, and i every time i do when i think oh this is one you know you start to get to know the ones that are going to sell well yeah. and i'm like and then it's gone before i've documented properly i'm like Shit, that was stupid yeah i can but, yeah I, I taught myself how to do it a while back and and you know, plus hanging around photo studios and stuff like that in, in the business that we came from. Um, you kind of, you can ask people questions and learn things and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I figured it out and I can take pretty okay photos of my stuff. Like I can crank them up the high res and edit them and do whatever I need. Um, so yeah, that works for, for the print end, you know, mm -hmm. I can upload those, those super high res photos. The analytics from that must be quite interesting to kind of see what resonates and what doesn't and what sizes yeah. work yeah. and stuff. Yeah. They, so the back end of that is there's like an art business university um, built into 
um, built into the art storefronts platform. So you like if somebody was to look at my website, they'd just see my website. But in in the background of it, they have all the analytics, they've got all this automation. Um, and then they've also got like a full art business university with like week, weekly zoom meetings and all that stuff. Um, podcasts, the whole deal where you can learn how to run your business. They have an art marketing calendar, which I never use mm. anymore, which I really should get back on and, <laughs> uh, and how to do everything in everything. So like you, there's nothing that they're telling you to do or on your website or anything that doesn't come with a full tutorial or, or a skeleton outline of how you should do it or whatever. Like it, it's an amazing platform. Um, mm. Ain't cheap, ain't cheap, but amazing. Well, presumably you make your money back on it though. Oh yeah. Your distribution yeah, yeah. is why. Yeah. yeah. If you're selling art, you, you make, you make your money. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's like, and it's also like a lot of people think that they sell the art for you, but that's absolutely not the case. It's all you. Um, right. They just show you how to do it and, right. and, and give you the platform, not give you, sell you the platform. So the platform. Yeah. Here's well, your that, platform. Model. Here's how to do yeah. it. Go do it. And it's up <laughs> well, to you. It, it's up to you to make sure your art's good enough to sell basically. Yeah. Which I think at some point you kind of know if it is or not, like, you know, what sells, it's not going to sell. And I know that uh, yeah, Julia Veenstra is uh, doing, setting something similar to that up in uh, based out oh, of Hamilton, okay. but, but she also has that additional marketing piece for artists that don't want to do the marketing, which I think is also smart because a lot of people ah. don't want to spend the time doing the marketing piece of it yeah. right? and the pushing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. <laughs> um, a lot of people, I, I mean, I don't want to do it, but I realize it's something I have to do. And, and I mean, in, in my art business in the last number of years, the business end has kind of become a larger thing. Like, I think I said this before, but like, it's become more important to me because like, I know how to paint, you know, I do what I do, but I mm -hmm. don't know how to sell the stuff as well as I know how to paint the stuff. So I'm really trying to teach myself that part of it and be on top of that nonstop. Yeah. Well, it's the intellectual challenge of learning something new and staying yeah. fresh, right? Yeah. Totally. I, I always think, and maybe because I'm a control monger, but before I want to delegate anything to anybody else too, I want to fully understand it, you know? Yeah. So at some point I would love to get to the point where I do have somebody to manage some of that stuff, but yeah, um, I still want to know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, for sure. With art storefronts, they do have, um, they do have another corner of their business where they'll look after your art marketing. So they'll do all your ads on uh, Instagram and, and, and uh, Facebook and, you know, they're, they're building a marketing company as, mm -hmm. as they go, but you know, still in the early stages of it. And uh, yeah, you know, I mess with that for a little while, but you know, I just don't, I don't know, Facebook marketing on Facebook really didn't work for me. You know, it just wasn't uh it wasn't bringing in the clients that I, that I hoped it would. So, um, yeah, I'll just stick to Instagram for now, I guess. Well, and marketing 101, right? Like you need to know where your clients are. And yep. so like, I know, for example, my clients are on Facebook and I should be doing more on Facebook, but uh, I just like Instagram better. Like it just yeah. seems, it just seems easier and more intuitive and stuff, but yeah, that's yeah. on me to find some time to kind of learn Facebook properly, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I mean, the Facebook marketing engine is, uh, is wild. If you get into it and start looking it's at pretty like powerful. format yeah. and cold ad and not, you know, all that stuff. It's like, Holy, there's a lot going yeah. on there. Yeah. yeah. Stuff <laughs> that you wouldn't think about, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, remarkably, we're at the end of our interview already. <laughs> so, uh, what's next for you? Cool. Um, uh, for me, I guess, uh, I've got a bunch of paintings on the easel got some more of those comic book paintings that I've been messing around with. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, Jeff and Jane, the turnpike collective has, uh, opened in Hamilton. So I've got some art yeah. in there. So we're going to check that out tomorrow night for their, for the big opening. Um, Exciting. I, uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, apparently it's a great looking spot. So can't wait to see it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've got the affordable art fair in London, England. Uh, at the end of October or like the last week of October or something like that. Whether I go there or not, I'm not sure. I don't know how much time I want to spend in England. And, uh, and geez, I don't know. 
really. Um, but we may be opening another collective in Yorkville. Um, we're kind of going through the, the, the preliminary stuff, trying to figure out if, if we can make another one work. Um, we have another location. So we're just kind of like going through, going through the team meetings and personnel stuff to figure out whether or not that's a, the, whether or not it's a, a viable thing to do. And that would be uh, from now or sorry, mid October till new year, I guess we'd, we'd run that. Um, and we like doing that. It's just, uh, you know, keeping everybody on their toes, making it work, you know? Mm -hmm. um, well, that sounds exciting. Yeah, it's cool. And then other than that, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to be taking some stuff out to Arteria Gallery in uh, Quebec, Bromont. Just have to figure out whether mm -hmm. I want to fly it, drive it or whatever. It's 10 hours from here. So, oh. yeah. And uh, yeah. And then, and like I said, just like trying to, trying to figure out more marketing, more expansion, more, uh, you know, I, I, I need to open up more markets. So that's, uh, so, Hey, if uh, you're out there and you're watching this and you're looking for art, you have a uh, here I go plugging right. Uh, if, hey, you have a, if you have a space or a gallery or uh, or a restaurant or anything, and you want some cool art to put in it, um, you can talk to Kate. You can talk to me. Um, yeah, I'm always looking for cool new opportunities. So yeah. that sounds cool. No, that's excellent. This is the platform for that. Yeah. And uh, I always like to end all my uh, questions with: if money, time, energy were not an issue. What would your big hairy ass goal be? Uh, uh, if it were not an issue, my goal, I, you know what? I think I'd be sitting on a tropical beach painting, to be honest with you. Like just, you know, painting whatever. But uh, yeah, that would be it. That's, that sounds pretty good. And just just <laughs> being happy. How about that? Just being like, just waking up every morning and going, yeah, this is awesome. You know. That is an awesome goal. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, well, thank so. you What's so yours? much, Todd. Um, you know, it's funny because I always think big. Like, I would love to do, I'd love to have a studio in a bunch of different cities and go to Tuscany for a bit. Mm. But, of course, you know, I'm social, so I would want to have lots of people around me. And yeah. um, I would love to take my company, Creative Adventures, which is doing art retreats for non-artists, mm. to some of these countries and kind of just hang out with a bunch of cool people and talk and paint and do art and okay. visit galleries. And... Yeah. But they, that's, those are also fine goals. More, <laughs> and be happy. More grand than mine. <laughs> I'm pretty simple. Well, part of mine is, you know, it's very interesting being an extrovert, being an artist, because so much of artistry and being an artist is being in your studio by yourself. Yeah. And it isn't good for me. And so I find I always need to find those other external connectors of energy, I guess. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So thank you so much. I've really enjoyed chatting and good thank luck you. with London. And uh, I'm sure we will see you at the next art show. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks for <laughs> Thanks inviting me to do this. It was awesome. Oh, I'm so glad we did. All right. Um, okay. Bye. We'll talk soon. Bye. Okay. That sounds perfect. Thanks to everybody for watching. <laughs> so this will be on YouTube and on my Facebook channel. Uh, Todd, you'll be able to save it as well. And eventually, if I can find the time, it will be on my podcast. Awesome. And so next week coming up, um, I'm actually going to interview my sister again. As you kind of recall, we just did our family garden show. And so we're going to talk about lessons learned, how we kind of grew from that. So hopefully join us then. So thanks a lot, Todd. And we will talk to you next week. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.